Thank you again for allowing me to share our thoughts here from New York. My fellow shoulder surgeons, I think we've heard this morning there's a bit of confusion. So is it my job now to make it easy? I don't know. I will tell you I do have a bias, and it's clear, and so let's see what we can work out together. But let's get answers. Um, so we know we've heard, so I don't have to repeat that this is a problem, anterior instability, as it says in the young patient. And we know now definitively that non-operative treatment is the wrong answer. And that was what we did a little in the United States. So it's about early success. And that's what I'm going to drive home today. You should never hear about multiple dislocations. We have the news to know what to do. Dr. Rowe trained me, and he said, just do the open bank card. Well, we lost range of motion with his early uh, procedures. And we know and we've heard about arthroscopic bank card. You just saw a slide, I've never seen it, of 17.5%. I see another slide, if there's bone loss of 13.5% or is it 20%? And we can't seem to agree each other what it is. And you heard two talks that do the latter J. Don't worry about the bank card, maybe in some patients. But what you did hear is, we haven't figured out how to talk to each other. So if you have a collision athlete, for us that's in rugby, American football, you need to pick the right procedure. And we need to write in the literature specifically, this is an article about collision athletes. And if we have a contact athlete, like you see with soccer and basketball or limited contact or volleyball or non-contact in swimming and tennis, you have to pick the right procedure for the right athlete. And if you do that, in your hands, it's going to work every time. So the bone loss, my job, but you've heard it already twice, is it's always there. You have the procedure, 6.8% in 41% of patients. So we have to look for it, it's true. And we have to figure out what the size of the bone issue is so that we can try that first time to put the bone back. Don't worry about those other procedures. Here you can see most recently, and I can pick any article as you saw as well, the QR codes are there for you as well, of 714 athletes and studies of first time injury and the amount of bone loss that occurs at the initial event. And can we keep that to be a low number? Another article you can see of 871 athletes with instability. The bottom line is that primary stabilization is the key to preserving the patients. They can give you all the statistics that you want. It's not going to change anything. You need to act early. That's the point. How do we measure it? We look at the glenoid, and you can see here, and I'm going to talk about critical bone loss. Some have said less than 13%. And they say you can get equal results if you have no bone loss, but I just told you 41% of patients have bone loss. So are they telling us the right? And if you do have the inverted pair, I'm there. It's the Latouche that does win every day. If you've never seen or measured it, it's so easy to measure bone loss in your own CAT scans. If you get it, you measure the distance across the distance. We know how to do this, so you should definitely attempt to measure your bone loss in every patient that you see. You need to measure the bone loss in the humeral head as well. And the, quest, the question is, what is clinically significant? And we fight about that every time. I wish we were as definitive as our arthroplasty surgeons. We don't have answers, and the question is, where's the answer going to be? But absolutely, as it increases humeral head loss, we have increasing instability, and maybe we have to deal with that as well. Here you can see the hill sax lesion. You saw it before. The engagement on the posterior rim. In humeral abduction and external rotation. And there's the indication for maybe an open ladder J. And I'm on that camp side. You heard about on and off track, so I don't have to do it again. If it's on track, I think of it, you know, the railroad is on the train. And if it is there, I will tell you here in the United States, for many of us, I'll still do a bank card when it's less than 20%. And if the glenoid defect is greater than 20%, I'm going and it's an on-track lesion, I will do that in the latter gen. But if it's off-track, well, I'm going to add a remplissage 
along with the bank card and still get the stability because I'll show you my problem with some of my ladder J's. But yes, if the glenoid defect is big, it's time for a ladder J, but I don't want that big defect because I'm going to fix it. So here's a complex algorithm. The question is, can we put all this and pick the right procedure as we know from anterior instability? If there's no bone loss, if we get lucky enough, we can do a soft tissue procedure, but a bank card is not a bank card is not a bank card is not a bank card, and that's the problem. People put plication sutures. People start with an anchor that's at 7 o'clock for a right shoulder or 5 o'clock for a left shoulder and then hug it up and truly inferiorly, almost like a multidirectional instability. So let's quickly go through that open bank card. I said, my wrestlers... I lose unless I do an open bank art today in 2023 because that ligament dyslexia, I do not win. I don't try an arthroscopic bank art. I go right to an open and I can get them stable. First time dislocated in a 16 and a 17 year old young man or woman. Recurrence rates, here they are. It's a problem for a collision athlete. 58% in a rugby player, so that's the wrong procedure. I would agree. But non-contact athletes, maybe it's different. Pick the sport that they're doing. Reasons for failures, I have people that do these crazy things. It's failure of fixation. It's the tunnels pull out. It's early return to sport. If you have this procedure, these are young people, you have to hold them back. I used to not hold them back. I have to insist that I'm conservative in my therapy. Recurrence rates, here you can see with bone loss, Emilio Cabo from Spain, he says 15%, and he's a good surgeon. Bone loss greater than 20%, bank card alone, should never be done alone. I do agree with that here in recent literature. Here's the answer, though. If you have a bony lesion, I'd like you to look. Why not put the pieces of bone back together? Why not figure out, beginning at the most inferior aspect, Take those fragments, do a double row, just like we do for rotator cuff, and hold them back together and then heal the bone, just like you heard it's about the bone for people in the latter J. You have to intercede. This non-operative treatment after the first dislocation is a thing of the past. You operate. That's the nicest part as an orthopedic surgeon. Here we can see an open and arthroscopic, again, recurrence of instability if you put back the bone right away. So let's go down quickly that path of bone loss only in latter J, arthroscopic or open for a moment, if I can. You heard about it, so I don't have to repeat um, here uh, the beginnings of latter J. It's too important to give respect to people that came before us. In contact athletes with osseous de deficiencies, here you can see large hills. These are all the reasons that in Europe, Gilles does it beautifully watching his, and he's now retired, a latter J. And for many of you, you have made me train there. But if you've trained in New York or California and other things, you may say, wait a minute, I can do a beautiful bank card procedure, but the bank card is not the bank card, as I said. But here, the lower recurrence rates, absolutely for ladder J. I'm saying better functional patient satisfaction at first. The open ladder J, you saw the video before, so I'm going to move forward. Here's the recurrence rates. It restores the bone integrity. You know to harvest the bone graft. You don't need to create that sling effect because the conjoint tendon becomes that dynamic sling. And here you've seen a video as well, whether you put screws or buttons, you can argue it day in and day out. You're still going to see some of these unfortunate complications, but no different here when I'm putting the graft down. And you make sure, as you have said before, not to have lateral overhang, if anything, under, but try to get it exact. Here we can see a reproduction of it. That's classic. The complications, they're there. We know they're there in the best of hands, and that's the problem with the latter J, to try first, if you can do it, just repair the bone rather than going forward to another procedure because in the open ladder J, and I saw the 10-year follow-up, you're correct, 10 years, there is no arthritis, so follow me 20 years, I guarantee you an arthritic condition. 
and now suddenly you have big arthritis. And I guess that's good as a shoulder surgeon because now you're going to put in the arthroplasty procedure. But is that the answer, or should we now intercede with a soft tissue procedure early on? Return to sport, I can't argue. Here's the numbers of return to sport at the same level. That's the key. Do they return to the exact sport? Not return to sport doing something less. But beware, in America, if you're a baseball thrower, you cannot do a ladder J. That pitcher will never throw, or an Asian or uh, a Japanese throwing in that league. And so you have to be careful to pick the procedure. So I started looking at the arthroscopic Latterge, but I heard of, you know, Laurent Lafosse, and you visited him when I was younger, and he really helped you and me to understand his procedure. Pascal Boileau then really modified this with his what we call East Portal. Is it safe or not safe to do? So we went and published to look at, with my fellows, what can we do? And lo and behold, we defined a portal that is safe, that we were taught never go on the medial side, that's suicide for uh, the portal because we'll have complications. So I'm here to say there is a safe zone. It's defined there, 45 to 50 millimeters distal to the coracoid, 30 to 35 is medial. You can reproducibly go in this area and try, as now many of us are doing, quietly in a laboratory first, visiting people, not trying it alone for an arthroscopic bank card to see to avoid that arthritis. You can do it with suture buttons, you can do it with screws, you can do it with two or four, it depends. It's there and people are now starting to do this and to consider it, you should visit. There's still an overall complication rate. We're still not getting it right. And long term, there's also graft osteolysis as well Besides now at 15 years, we're finding truly looking some arthritic condition that is occurring. So we don't have the answer yet. Do you do the glenoid bone grafting? As you see, quickly as I end, you can do prefabricated in the United States, taking a piece of bone. You can do it with a capsular shift, and I do like to do it in the lateral decubitus position. I find I can get lower down. You have other options of distal tibia, iliac crest, distal clavicle. So the distal clavicle really does restore that arc, but the complication rate is still there in some of our best surgeons in the United States. And here you can see outcomes that are reported depending on which you use, a distal tibia, a coracoid, or you can do the clavicle as you can see here. And you heard about the iliac crest for the last two lectures as well, and I would encourage you to venture into the land of distal tibia and to the clavicle more than the iliac crest of low studies. Lastly, to say, do you do rompassage? You can perform it arthroscopically. Consider it, if you're doing the bank art, consider something extra to avoid that re-dislocation. And return to sport, here you can see in collision sports how you can help the patient. There is bone loss on the humeral side that we've ignored for a lot of years as bank art patients. Go to the OR, that's the point I'm here to say. It's a better outcome than initial conservative treatment when the family comes with uncles and aunts and grandmas and grandpas and they say, this is my young star, male or female. Well, I always say, Billy or Diana, she's not that good. And the point is, it's time to intercede with an operative intervention to lower the subsequent dislocations that we don't have the answers. Do it correct the first time. How come this truck driver didn't see the clearance? Is it that obvious to all of us? We have to identify the type of athlete. We have to know, as you've heard, the orthopedic history. Pick the correct operation by all means and then get success so we don't argue on the stage which is better or which type. I think that's the key that I would like to bring home today. So follow the algorithm to predict success for our patients. It's convoluted, it's complex, but I think you've heard it in the last two uh, presentations. And then together, we'll figure out how we can help each other to find our patients better results as we should. I thank you. This is a picture of my daughter. 
hugging someone she did not know at age four. Why did she greet this other person on the beach? I don't know. But the point is we need to be kinder to each other, and being together today is what sharing information is all about. Thank you.